Don joining us as well any minute. Don's here. Hi, Don. Hi. Hi, Jenny. Can you speak so we can check mic? Awesome. Good stuff. Hi, Don. Hi, John. Perfect. We can get started in about 30 seconds. Just allow the last few people to join. Should I say John then on we'll real? Or should I say hello, stranger? It's been a while, John. I've, I've missed you, buddy. Sorry, I was just eating some chocolate, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, mate? Good morning, Terry. You well? Yeah, good, thanks. Good. Um, awesome. Mich Michelle, good well, welcome to today's... Yeah, uh, just very quickly, Michelle, I'll get back to you later on that. Uh, Michelle to everyone. Jenny, how do you get? Yeah, Michelle or Jane, I'll get back to you regarding teleprompter, yeah. How do you get the subtitles on the work problem sometime? No idea. Craig did it. <laughs> uh, subtitles. On the work teleprompter. Yeah. Oh, we did it afterwards. We added the, the subtitles in afterwards with uh, subtitles.love. Cool. It came up with some random stuff though at the beginning. I think the, oh, no, the yeah. first part start of it said something about do you like a pizza? Or it, was, it was something really random, so we have to, have to change a lot of it. Yeah, didn't we? yeah, it was really weird. I don't know if it was my accent or what, but it didn't. Uh, didn't Stephanie's come out right. accent. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Craig. I'm going to turn so, my uh, camera off. Welcome. Have I got delay? Mm -hmm. Terry. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. I've turned my camera on. It's a really poor, poor reception, so I've turned my camera off. Okay. Yeah, same here as well. Um, well, welcome to today's session. Uh, it is Thursday, three minutes past three now, 29th of October. Um, and today's session is going to be an interview with, with uh, Don Alexander, um, <laughs> who's going to be sort of... Well, those of you that who know Don or, you know, regular... He's a regular to all of these sessions that we do, but he's always got, um, you know, something really intelligent to say or insightful to say. So we wanted to interview him for a while, actually. Um, didn't because, you know, COVID was going on and we wanted to make sure the training was really relevant. Um, but I think Terry spoke to him uh, maybe a month ago now, two months ago now. And mm. he sort of, sort of said that, you know, since, you know, this year, we sort of 30% up on, on revenue, uh, even with COVID going on. Um, so what we want to do today is sort of hear from Don, hear about his journey, sort of break down, um, you know, what's working for him, what's not, what he thinks works best. Um, and just, yeah, I guess trying to suck all the knowledge that we can from Don and his process or his take on our process, see how it's working in his business. Um, Terry, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, uh, Don made a good point. I think it was Don. Yeah, he made a good point a couple of weeks ago. Um... Don's got a wealth of experience. And most of the guys on the come on these calls have a wealth of experience. And Don made a good point. Every time I person on a personal level, when I come on these calls, I learn something new. Um, and I think Don, Don saying that sort of summed it up. That and I guess it summed up his attitude as well, in as much that um it kind of comes along with an open mind. And there's there's a wealth of experience on these calls, and you will always learn something. And I always see Don as the as the wise sage, you know. Um mm. Um, and yeah, some great insights from Don. So I'm really looking forward to this interview. Awesome. And just before we get started as well, I think, you know, we, we do these interviews quite a lot and the temptation is always going to be, um, especially when someone's in a different sort of sector to you, is, is that, oh, that won't work in my sector or that only works in that country or whatever. It's, it's easy to sort of um, pick the differences of, of why that's working for one person, but it won't work for you. Um, Again, what I'd encourage you to do is sort of listen with an open mind. Um, everything that does work for you has probably been taken from another, another se sector anyway, or even another industry completely. Um, I think for you to get the best sort of results from this program in, in general, um, but, and, and this interview is to, you know, come with an open mind and think first, how can I adapt that and use it in my business rather than sort of dismissing it um, right from the off? Um, Darren, Mike, anything you want to add? Before we sort of go over to Don, I think it's um, I think what you guys have developed over a period of time is is a system and a process that works, um, and I think that works regardless of 
you know, as you said, whatever country you're working in, whatever industry sector you're recruiting in, it's a case of, particularly initial stages, is, is putting your trust in the process and just following it to a T. Yeah, 100%. Darren? Um, I'm really looking forward to this as well. I, I really like, you know, these, these sessions where everybody chips in and everybody's got something to say. Um, you still there? My broadband went off then. Um, and Don yeah, normally comes up with a bit of a nugget and a bit of a, a Don bomb, so I'm looking forward to this. What do you call that? Don Don? A Don bomb, yeah. I like that. There you are, Don. No pressure, buddy. Don, welcome. Thank you, Terry. Um, and I appreciate everybody's time being on. Um, before I even start, uh, you know, this, this group for me has been invaluable, as has uh, Terry's, Drew's, Mike's, and um, uh, Darren's entire, you know, this entire system has been uh, what I would really call a breakthrough uh, for me. I think that, and to give you some perspective, I've been uh, in the recruiting industry since 19, early 1997, um, started out on the tech engineering side and moved over full time with my former firm to the biotech industry in 2002. And before that, I was a retail stockbroker for about seven years with uh, Bank of America and Shearson Lehman Brothers. And no, I didn't cause Shearson Lehman Brothers to go under, <laughs> but uh uh, but the, you know, I was really looking for a system to develop new leads and new business, I think, along the way. And I've been reasonably successful. I, I would call it reasonably successful at um, closing perhaps referred business or uh, cert certainly with the clients that I've worked with and had developed a, you know, re reasonably robust network over the years. But uh, I was really looking for a better way to systematize new business development. And what I found in the journey so far, and, and I want to be very candid with everybody on the, on the call, I've only implemented a fraction of what I need to uh, implement. And I think the nugget there is to get started, to take some action. Um, you know, unless you're Superman, it's going to be pretty hard to deploy every single aspect of uh, the learnings all at one time. So I think you have to kind of break down what might be most important and start there and build on that over a number of months and really a number of years until you can really get it all uh, uh, systematized. So I really look at it more as a journey, uh, if you will. And, you know, since the beginning, since we started in December of this past year, um, we started with the ebook, uh, the LinkedIn three step process. Uh, we started, I remember talking to Terry in December last year of, uh, you know, you should call clients that you haven't talked to in a while. There was, there was all of that kind of, uh, that kind of activity. We wrote our first, uh, ebook and that's gone through a referral of Mike's actually a, uh, a, uh, a more polished version in the last uh, couple of months or so. And we've developed things. I did. I had no idea what a POP page was. <laughs> uh, you know, again, I had no concept about any of this kind of uh, scenario. I thought we had a reasonably good website, but uh, boy, has that undergone a transformation. Um, you know, and, and there's the hard factors that I see, like, you know, the number of calls, dials being made and things of, of that nature. Uh, and one of the things that we have to work on actually is the, um, the recording of that activity into a meaningful uh, format. And by that, I mean, unfortunately, I found or learned that our CRM system doesn't do what I was hoping it would do in terms of making that, you know, a one button, you know, uh, push the button, know exactly how many calls you've made in the, you know, in the past uh, week or month or whatever the case may be. It's, uh, it's going it, to take me a little bit to, to get that so that when Terry asked me the question, you know, well, you know, you've spoken with, uh, you know, four hiring managers or whatever it is this month, how many people did you actually ring? I'll be able to answer that question a little bit easier. Tell um, up, but anyway, we can extract the data. I've just got to get it down. But um 
Go but on. it's been a journey. And, um, uh, you know, I just really consider it a learning experience. And, you know, one of the things I was thinking about, and I talked with my wife about this last night, is uh, this whole year with COVID has been, you know, I think a struggle for a lot of us in the uh, UK. I was looking at uh, actually at a reporter in Milan last night. It looks like Italy is going back into a level of lockdown. Uh, we are here in the States. Uh, and in that way, it's been, um, you know, I think a struggle for us, uh, you know, but I guess the flip side of that has been with the lack of activity of being able to go out, I suppose, and meet more clients either in person. I used to do a lot of networking events uh, and th you know, uh, trade shows. I think Mike's been to some of those as well. And with the lack of being able to do that, the flip side of that is I've been able to pour in uh, significant more volumes of time uh, into the process this year. And for that, I'm, you know, in a, in a very real sense, I'm grateful. Uh, because there were far less, and again, in a way, distractions. Um, Don, Don. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so, so, yeah sorry, can you hear me? Just, 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 just for everybody else, if you've got any questions, please feel yeah. free to, to uh, ask Don any questions. Just type them in the box and, and we'll, 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 we'll yeah. ask you those questions. Um, and I really appreciate that. I want to just go back, though, to, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know, October or whenever, before, before you engage with us. I'm just... A couple of questions. Um, just give us an overview. First of all, first question is, what's the market that you serve now in terms of the niche and the salary that you, you recruit at? And is it perm or, 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 or contract? Yeah, that's a great question, that Terry. Sorry for not uh, better stating that. So we're in the life sciences industry. So we focus on drug development, medical device, diagnostic technologies that all point centrally to improvements in human and patient health. So that's what we do. We do it all on a, on a direct hire basis. And our, uh, I would say our average salary is probably in the 125, 150, uh, $150,000 kind of range at this point. Okay. So on 100, average. yeah, if you call it, let's call it an average of 130. And what's the average percentage that you charge? 25. 25. You've said that with, with no hesitation. And what Prior to meters, I don't know, don't know this, I'm, I'm not, you know, but what was your percentage of retained work prior to meeting us? Um, probably in the neighborhood of uh, 30, 40% retained okay. contingents, or, and we call it regain, engaged. It's kind of a hybrid model that I can explain, but. Yeah, and, and what, what, out of interest, um, what prompted you? you, you, you would have had numerous emails from me, uh, videos and everything else, but what prompted you to go, actually, I'm going to jump on the call with these guys and actually hear what they've got to say. What was going on in your life, your business that prompted that, Don? It, well, uh, I think it was a strong desire to develop new business outside of our, um, you know, the business that we have. In, in our world, we tend to focus, Terry, on small to mid-sized companies rather than, you know, the Pfizer's and the GlaxoSmithKline's of the world in our universe. And because of that, what happens is our clients wind up, if they're successful, getting acquired. And if they're not successful, they wind up, uh, it's kind of a binary event, they go out of business. But, uh, uh, but over time, that means turnover in customers. So uh, it's very important for us to con continue to develop new business based on the markets that we, that we serve. And more specifically, I think what, uh, what prompted me is I had seen emails and there was a specific video I remember watching. I don't recall exactly what it was, but there was a video about, you know, the ebook concept. And then on the video, I remember seeing Mike's, uh, actually Mike's ebook uh, featured on there. So I popped over to his website, signed up for his ebook. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what is that? What is this thing anyway? And so I downloaded it. I'm one of those that actually read it, you know, and I was like, <laughs> Oh, this is this is uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, I really like this idea, and uh, uh, you know, and then I got I got some further emails from Mike on a I guess on a chain, and I was like, this is really cool. Why am I not doing this? And then that's when I kind of said, I I need to talk to this Terry guy. I really do. So there you go. And, and what there's some great questions coming in. I promise you, we, we will get some questions, but just I just want to get a bit of background. So um, it's fair to say you've worked with other trainers and coaches over time. So. What was it that you thought, actually, yeah, I'm going to pull the trigger on this. But, yeah, I'm just curious on, on your thinking after that, after having the conversation. 
I think this training, and I have been involved with many trainers over the years, and I think what is very uh, special about this training is that it's involved on uh, really extensively with new business development and a way to uh, capture that, to systematize it and make it a process that uh, can continue. A lot of the trainers that we uh, that I've worked with before probably focused a little more on the on the recruiting side, maybe to some degree overcoming objections, things of that nature. But this really seemed to me to be a strong system and, and, and honestly something that I had never experienced before. Again, I, I had no idea what a POP page was. Uh, I didn't even know the term. I was like, well, what the hell is that when I first yeah. started? So Okay. So and so that's where you were and you thought actually I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on board. And one thing's this is really for the for the likes of Etienne, Andrew, Luke, Jacob and Lean and these kind of guys where they've just joined the program. And you, what would you say is the biggest thing in terms of mindset that you kind of had, you got your head around that then impacted your business on a personal level, Don? Well, Terry, the, uh, the mindset is, is so very important. And I had not been consistent, uh, consistently prepping myself in the morning before I started my calls. Um, I just had not been doing that. Uh, last year, although I did do various trainings, I, I don't know that I even listened to an audio book this year. I think I've listened to 10 or 12 of them uh, so far. So um, the other thing is uh, areas uh, that Mike and Darren have helped me with, like the uh, spreadsheet um, in terms of keeping score of, of what I'm actually doing, the time blocks that I'm doing it in. And every morning now I, I wake up and I listen to, uh, you know, whatever it is, 10 or 15 minutes of the Envision app. And that's something Mike passed along to me. I'd, again, never heard of that before. And it just helps you uh, get in the right mindset to, uh, to go about your day. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And again, uh, whether it's, and we're not, we're not necessarily promoting the Envision app, but though I'd say it's a, it's a very good one. What Don's talking about there is that most of your success comes from your thinking. And if you can prime your mind, very much like you can prime your body first thing in the morning, um, all the evidence shows that it, that it has a, a positive impact on, 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 the, on the success you can have that day. So you'll probably hear sports people talk about visualization and successful people talk about visualization. And we, we consciously encourage you to do that because that's where most of your success comes from. Um, Michelle's asked a question, uh, it's a great question. And I promise I'm gonna cover them all. For you, uh, uh, Don, what's been the biggest change in you and your business over the last 12 months? Great question, by the way, Michelle. That is a great question. And I think the overarching uh, theme over the past 12 months is just how much um, you'll find, Michelle and, and others, that you're capable of if you actually deploy um, the system uh, and you do it in a meaningful way, in a step-by-step -step way. The biggest challenge I had in deployment of the system was trying to take on too much at one time. It was like drinking from a freaking water hose. And I got to the point where, uh, and this was a few months back, where I had to do a little bit of a reset. I was like, okay, I need to look at the numbers. What am I actually doing? What am I spending my time on? Um, and I, I wouldn't change it for the world because one of the... I, I, I tend to buy into things easily unless I know differently or feel very strongly differently. So I'm one of those that, you know, if Terry or Drew say, do this, I'm like, I'm one that's likely to just go and do it and do it as reasonably quickly as possible and turn around and look at the results much, much later on. <laughs> My problem was, was that I wasn't looking at the results at all. I was just on autopilot, just doing, just, just going. And I think that was my biggest struggle was trying to take on maybe too much at one time. And uh, I, I don't regret that because I've gotten so much done, but um, it's been a lot of hours. Uh, I will yeah. say that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just curious. This is, this is for everybody else. Just let me know in the box if, if, if what Don's saying, is it, it, does this resonate with you and some of the things, some of the challenges that you're facing right now, or just some of Don's thinking, I'll just be interested to hear what, what people have got to say. Um, and I also, I'm, I'm going to come to, I'm going to, I've got a question here from Jenny. And I know why you're asking this, Jenny, because uh, I saw your, your question in, in the Facebook book. But Jenny's question is, how do you communicate the difference in, on benefits of retained? Because you joined, before I go on to that, 
35% of your business previously was retained. What percentage of your business now is retained? Uh, Don't I'd say it's I'd say it's probably 50 or 60%. I haven't I haven't done the computation. Mo- most all of it's exclusive contingency or or, or retain model, uh, virtually all of it in fact. Correct. I think there's one search we may be working on and it's kind of passive uh, that's contingency right now, but you know if we have candidates then we'll send them but um, yeah, so it's it's in that range anyway, Terry. Okay, so Jenny's question is, how would you, how do you communicate the difference and, and the benefits to a client engaging you on the retained basis, Don, rather than half a dozen of your competitors on the contingent basis? Well, uh, our in our agreement language actually um, goes to this as does a, a page on our website that actually lists out like a the differences in a in a software. Uh, uh, model buying the basic version or the deluxe version. But at the end of the day, what I try to ask uh, candidates or excuse me, clients is, is it important um, for, for you to have someone to own the search? And, and by that, I mean uh, to own the process and, and to really own the outcome. Because with contingency search, the downside uh, to it uh, and, and there are reasons to use contingency search. I try to, at the end of the day, act as a little bit more of a consultant or a navigator. That's my, that's my disposition, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not try- on, a, on the phone with a client, I'm not trying to necessarily sell one thing or another, just to point out what I see as the advantages and the disadvantages. And one, one of the things that I see is the biggest disadvantage um, to a firm on using contingency that I always try to point out to clients is a situation that happened to me personally a number of years ago. And, and, and again, this isn't about me. It's about the message or the branding that the candidate receives. And this is, why is this important? Well, if you have sought after candidates, candidates that are in high demand, then imagine what the following sounds like. So a few years ago, I called a gentleman in California at a, at a biomanufacturing facility and solicited to him for a position. He said to me, this was contingency, he said to me, Don, you're the fourth recruiter that's called me about this position in the past week. What is this company, desperate? And that's always stuck with me. Now, Taking me, let's take me out of the equation for a minute. Do you, th- you know, but do you, do you think I made another phone call on that search? Mm. No, no. Um, so I bowed out and that was the right thing for me to do for both myself and the client. But what did the client miss out on there? Do you think that candidate went to work or even had anyone represent him to the client? Now, this is a high demand skill set that we're talking mm. about here. Yeah, answer and that the, the, question is a, is a resounding no. Yeah, when you get something a statement like that from a candidate, it's like, wow, what is this company doing? Not not me. He wasn't pissed off at me per se. He was pissed off at the company we were recruiting for, and it just looks bad, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, it looks bad for that client. So I try to I really try to talk more around that example to Jenny's question than. Um, than anything else. Yeah, thanks for that, Don. And just to add to that in terms of the law of supply and demand, this applies to, to everybody. If you're talking to a hiring manager, one of the questions you should be asking is, you know, is this is this role in, in, in short supply? Are there a shortage of these quality candidates? If the hiring manager is then saying, yes, there is a shortage of these quality candidates, the hiring manager can't say to you, there is a shortage, but I want to pay the lower fee. The law of supply and demand says that if there's a shortage, the hiring manager has to pay a higher fee. You can't have it any other way. So just going back to your subject, it, it is about people often think that get, getting retainers is about selling, but it often is just about asking the right questions and eliciting their view and their needs. And once you elicit their views and their needs, the hiring manager will have to or, will tend to be consistent with that. So they can't say, yes, is the shortest, but I'm going to pay your lower fee. Yes, I want these candidates exclusively, um, but... I want, yeah, I want these candidates exclusively and I want the best candidates. You can't, you can't, have, it, you can't have it both ways. So 
I hope that answers your question, Jenny. I'm gonna, I want to come to something that well, Damien said. Terry, sorry, Terry, sorry, if I, yeah. Terry, if I could, uh, and I apologize, but I wanted to throw a couple other things out to Jenny on that on that question, if I might. Um, one, one is a YouTube video that we did. I'll just copy it. You can watch it when you when you want to. I'll put it in the chat box. But um, this is a, a YouTube video that we did. Uh, I did with one of my advisory board members, John Campbell, who had uh, a major contract research organizations, uh, uh, talent acquisition department. And we did the, the video was the merits of, of contingency versus retain. So this is a video and you can borrow the subject matter in it, make your own, whatever. But um, this is, this is something that, uh, you know, ultimately you could use this maybe as almost a follow-up to a, you know, to a call that was discussing uh, to say, Hey, here, watch this, you know, here, you know, this per person who's in the industry that's going to talk to you more, you know, a little bit more about the merits of, uh, I guess, one versus the other. What John goes on to say, uh, just to point this out in the, in the video itself, um, the, the position level will also be dependent, dependent to some degree, uh, maybe on the answer to this question. Uh, here's what I would say. Um, if, you, if you've got a company looking, I guess in our industry anyway, for a C, CEO, COO, CFO, chief medical officer, and they're not willing to, to do a retain search, um, that, that says a whole lot about, about the organization. Um, because, and again, this is from a candidate's viewpoint. Um, if they find out, that, you know, a candidate finds out that you're not exclusive or not retained on a C-level search, that would be very bizarre in our uh, in our industry. So those are warning flags that you would tend to stay away from, you know, that type of client in my in my view. Yeah, good point. If you, can, point. If you can't yeah. get across the merits, now, look. Conversely, if it's a help desk representative, I, I might understand why they might want a contingency search. So I think part of it goes to the levels that you're recruiting at, and that's the other thing I wanted to point out. Thanks, Don. I want to come to Darren. Darren's got a question, and I want to come to Mike and then Damien. So the Damien said I thought was interesting. I'll come to you first, Darren, with your question, and then to Mike. Yeah, um, Don, I was interested to understand if you'd started to recruit at a higher level now with regard to sort of base salaries and the people you recruit at, and whether you've re reviewed and increased your fees in, in the last year or so. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, we haven't um, increased our fees. Um, we have been a little bit more selective, I would say, about the kinds of work, Darren, that we're, that we're taking on. So uh, our transition has been a little bit more away, I guess, from the contingency side of the business to exclusive contingency or you know, a retained um, engaged type, type model. So, uh, so I haven't, yeah, we really haven't focused on raising uh raising the fees uh this year now uh my feeling on that personally again is when the market uh, uh starts to tighten up and or we're in positions to be able to quote higher fees because it's a say say a actual sea level search um you know won't be hesitating to uh pull that trigger so excellent thank you thanks for that don thank thanks darren mike you've got a question and then and then damien i'd be interested to yeah, listen to Don's obviously been through a journey here, and, and I don't think that I don't think that journey is yet complete. But if there was one lesson that you could take away from what you've done so far that you could share with people, what out of everything that you've learned, what would be the key lesson that you would take? Uh, that's a great question, Mike. And 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 I would say, uh, you know, this to you. Uh, hats off to you and Darren for a lot of this, but it's just to get uh, the outsourcing components up operational and and done as soon as possible you see when when i you know 10 months ago uh i looked i looked at that as maybe a i don't know a challenge a struggle something i hadn't really done a lot of before um i had to i'm a control freak by nature and you know i was like letting go of the reins and things of that nature it was a weird time and a weird feeling but the more I have uh, outsourced, uh, you know, I, I, it, I even think differently now. I, I think what, what can be automated, it, it, the activity I'm doing now, can it be automated? I mean, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Can it be automated? 
Uh, if not, can another human do this? So there's a couple of questions. And, and every time I'm doing something, I find myself asking those questions. And if the answers to either of those questions are yes, they go in my, you know, my diary of things that I want to outsource. And so that becomes, you know, that running to do list of, uh, you know, what else can I get rid of? I'm thinking more about what else can I get rid of these days than, uh, than ever before. So I hope that that helps. Excellent. Thank, thanks, Don. Uh, Damien, you, you talked about the, the Superman syndrome. Uh, just, just share with us that and the question you have for, for Don on that, Damien. So I think um, it probably resonates with a lot of um, the comments in the chat box. Um, there, it, it's, like, it's like an omni-channel solution that you guys are providing. And there's always a different concept on a weekly basis. There's obviously the Monday uh, meetings, there's the Thursday, Friday piece as well, and obviously the one-to-ones. And um, I, I echo 100% what Don was saying. It's like trying to drink from a hose pipe. It's, it's like trying, trying to drink from Niagara Falls at times. Um, but what I failed hugely in was I was trying to take it all on board myself and not distribute it to the team. So as a result, every time I was trying to implement it and not, not sticking to the process, I was failing and not going back and revisiting what I had done, all I felt was, geez, I've just totally screwed that up. So as a result, I start to get slowly more detached and isolated from talking to you, Terry, no offense. Um, um, and uh, it, it's, it's taken a bit of a, a, it's taken a long reset for me to come, to come back and go, this, this, I, 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 I can't do this. So the last two weeks for us as a business, not, not me, for, for us as a business has been fantastic in terms of sticking to the process and not whether bothering uh, to look at what the outcome is so far. So mm. we're just believing 100% in the process. I've done retained search for 10 years or so. Um, and, and, and again, it, it, it does take some of the concepts and ideas within Apex do take you out of your comfort zone. I think you've just got to stick with it, try it, and maybe paraphrase it and adapt it to your style, but the, the, the methodology has to be 100% within that. Yeah. And just, just to add to what you just said there, Damien, you said that you felt that you failed. And I, I would challenge you on that and say, I don't know if it's failure, but you, you've learned the lesson and you have to learn the lesson to move on. So Agreed. I would, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would see it more as a, a lesson. And oh, oh, massively, fact, yeah. massively. And I, th and I think one of the things that I, because I spoke to Mike and Pete Walker before joining the programme, and uh, one thing both both of the guys said is I left it too long to actually do it. So we signed up and we didn't do anything for a few months or so. And then we kind of like kicked in. Oh, I think Pete said that more than Mike did. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do that. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> you, won't be the, you won't be the last person to do that. I mean, yeah, exactly. And human nature, human nature. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, it's, and, you, you, and the reason being, just very quickly before I go to Drew, to come outside your comfort zone is where all the effort is. But to get the results you want, it's different to your baby has to be different to what it is today, which means coming outside that comfort zone. And that's where the fear is. And, and that's what stops many people thinking, bloody hell, I've got to come outside my comfort zone. This is this is uncomfortable. So you made some read some really good points there, Damien. Thank you. Yeah, True, no, over to you, thanks. buddy. Cheers, Damien. Uh, yeah, sorry, can you hear me okay? I can you actually, yeah. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, I had a question. Um, just to go back to something you said right at the start of the um interview I couldn't jump in at the time because my internet was bad but you said that you know one of the things that you that you changed is is that you know today now every morning you, you prep yourself properly you work on your mindset and there's a few comments saying that yeah mindset's been the biggest thing for me in, uh, in, in the chat box but I know for a lot of people that come through this program um, they neglect that part of it they neglect the four critical pillars um, and they yeah they might, might do it for a period but then then they stop so I wanted to sort of go into more um, specifics around that what what has been sort of the what have been the noticeable notice, noticeable differences with you you know from before you were prepping yourself properly to when you started doing it what's how's your performance been uh drew i think it's been uh really fantastic i mean uh again i'm gonna um, go back to mike's uh, uh you know the spreadsheet that he put out and i've i've done a few things differently with it uh but uh it's very similar. Uh, it's just, I was not doing things like keeping track of my daily 
uh, goal, starting with the mindset really in the morning. So my routine is I get up at 530 in the morning. It's pretty early, but uh, I think there's a lot of people on this call that probably do that in their own time zone. Uh, I work out most days each week um, and uh, for a half hour. And uh, then I get, um, you know, right on to um, prepping my mind for the day using the Envision app. Um, I've got some different pieces that I, that I read, including my affirmations. Uh, and, and I just, again, it's, it's, I think to borrow Mike's term, it's very clinical. I, I read the things and I just, I just do it every, every day. And it gets my mind to, uh, to a place where I'm excited to get, uh, to get going. And, and the 10 before 10 calls become, uh, uh, I don't, I hate to use the word fun in a sense, but they are <laughs> almost fun. I, I you know, they don't, I, I used to, and I, I've never really been terrified of cold calling because I used to do a whole lot more of it as a retail broker than I do as a recruiter, a whole lot more. Um, so it, do, it doesn't really scare me, so to speak, but, but it's, uh, uh, you know, I just, I think my, my mind shift has been, I've, these have been so productive for me that, and, and to Terry's, I think, blog posts the other day on, I guess it was a Facebook post about the, the, uh, fellow in uh, commission sales that had done 1.2 million, but had a, because I got 3.8 million or whatever the numbers were of, of no's, I was like, absolutely. I, I want many, many people to get off my email list. I want many, many people to tell me no, because I know that my next yes is right around the, uh, you know, is right around the, uh, the block. Yeah. Um, and, and, and this is one of the hardest things. And I, I'm sorry, Drew, I may have deviated a little bit from your original question, mm -hmm. but this is one of the hardest things, I think, for a lot of people and even for me to a de uh, degree to, to grasp is that no's are actually excellent for your business. Every day when I pull people off of the woodpecker, you know, opt out or whatever um, that I see. A lot of these people aren't people that I would have followed up with anyway. In fact, the great preponderance of them are. Now, why is that? Well, when we did the original screening on Woodpecker, our query wasn't perfect, but you got to get out there and you got to get after it, right? So it's never going to be perfect. But my point is, most of the people that opt out of the email lists, the great majority of them are people I don't care about. It doesn't matter. I'm happy that they're off the list. So that list of 19,000 names can now be, you know, hopefully 12 or 13,000 far more qualified names. So I kind of laugh about that as I think about it, but it's the honest to God truth. So just on that, I mean, you said earlier that, um, you know, one of the things that you've done is you just hear what, what, what shared with you, you just, you just, you just sort of do it. Um, and I think, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that 99% of the time. I think the one time there's, there's been pushback from you, that I've noticed anyway was around email marketing and around yeah. this whole thing around unsubscribes, whereas now you seem literally completely the other way. Yeah, what sort of, I guess what sort of happened in how have you sort of changed your view on the unsubscribes um, in terms of email marketing? Yeah, and I've got to work, uh, that's one thing that I've got to work on with you and Terry Drew is, is my email marketing. That's, uh, that's coming up very soon on, on some personal calls. Um, but I, I think the idea, uh, my, my thought around that was really more the frequency uh, of the emails. Um, what, I, what I didn't want to have happen, the fear, if you will, is a large uh, volume of my existing subscribers to um, opt out as a result of the frequency being far too much. I do realize that content has a lot to do with opt outs, at least I believe it does. And uh, some of, you know, some of the people that would opt out, you know, I, I think it just becomes harder to market to them if they obviously if they do uh, opt out. So what I was trying to do is get my arms around and we did that recently in the session, I think a week or two ago, this notion of frequency. And again, I think uh, what, Je what Jeff had to say helped convince me in terms of uh, looking at the way that you all, you know, do your own email marketing. Um, but that was a, I guess a, that, that was probably my biggest fear was not that the big list of 19,000 people would be winnowed down to 13,000. I mean, to me, that was joyous. I was like, who cared? But if, however, a list of a thousand that were CEOs and 500 said, you're emailing me too much, I'm off your list forever. That was a fear. And so 
so I'm getting there. <laughs> and uh, I need to do a much, I recognize that I need to do a much better job of the email marketing that I do because I don't do it frequently enough. And I know that. I know it. Mm. Excellent. Thanks for that, Don. Can I, can I just pick up on something that, that Don said? Please. Um, Don said it, it's never going to be perfect. And it never is. And I think sometimes people spend so much time trying to get their ebook to perfection, trying to get their emails to read perfection. It's never going to happen. And when you're doing that, you're delaying the time that you could be putting stuff out to people. And yeah. Yeah, you ninety-five know, percent of the people you email out to or send an email e ebook to, they're never going to read it anyway. But if you wait and you wait that it's perfect, you're wasting time. And that, that, again, that was a key lesson for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just a question that I meant to ask earlier, Don. Do you do uh, interim or contracts, or is, is it all direct hire? It's all direct hire. It's all direct hire. E excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I want to go to Michelle uh, next. Michelle had a. Uh, made a statement about the, the the journey a bit earlier on um so yeah i'd just like to share your your opinion michelle about the journey and then any questions you got for don uh so this is the bit about um the program and how long it takes to sort of get into things yeah i mean it is an awful lot to take on i mean i i, I, don't, I can't remember i think we're for about four months in now and and obviously Sim, uh, like Damien, I've got a team um, and obviously they've all been adapting the programme. So I'd go I'd go through a, a, a something on the apex and then I'd roll it out to the team. And, you know, it takes when you've got eight people learning at different rates and, and people learn differently um, and you yourself trying to implement things. You know, there has been times you know, it's, it, it, it does feel overwhelming, you know, you put in a lot more hours, you're trying to create the books, create the brochures, do the videos, you know, set up the woodpecker for eight different campaigns and markets and then active campaigns and stuff. But it, it does slowly get better. Um, and, and, and I think everyone and myself as well, you sort of think, oh, this is it now and it's just going to happen. But, you know, as we've spoken about before, it's actually the journey. It's just it's just a shift. And, it, and actually, it's never going to just happen. It's, you, you know, we were going to have to constantly uh, continue to uh, do the actions and refine the actions and, and learn from the actions and develop. And, and it, it's a continuous journey. So if you if you sort of think, oh, there's going to be a utopia, hallelujah moment. That it's yeah, yeah. Happening. And that's when I, you do have to catch yourself because I think everyone thinks, oh, there's just going to get to a point where it's just all going to happen. But you do have to continue doing it to make sure it's consistent and, and you get what you want you know, over the next three to five years. It's not just a do it for 30 days or do it for 10 days and, and, it, and it all comes together. And it's getting into that and then relaxing into it a little bit. And as, um, as uh, I can't remember who said it, but you've got to believe because it's, it's a scary thing when you've got no work um, and you're saying no to work because it's crap work and, and you like, God, where's the next money coming in? But then, you know, you look at Mike and he's just closed a $52,000 retainer and a second retainer will be in six weeks time. And you think, bloody hell, that could be a, an, a, an annual um, turnover target for somebody. And if I could just close one 100K deal at 30 grand, you know, 30%, that's 30 grand. And that's like a quarter's worth of money. So you, you do have to believe in the process and settle yourself down and ease and just, you know, know that you're on, on, a, on a journey as opposed to, a quick fix i guess yeah just to clarify something michelle are you saying even if mike can do it anybody can do it is, is, that, is, that, is that what you were saying i didn't no, say michelle. that sorry, as you <laughs> i know you didn't i i'm teasing you, yeah, I, you I, 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 the day that i like to do that i'll do an elvis impersonation when i get a 52 000 return <laughs> we'll hold you to that <laughs> we're, we're gonna yeah, just for those that don't know mike did a, an elvis impersonation with the wig the clothes and everything and um it, it, you had to see it to believe it but the good news is we have recorded it so we will be sharing that with you but yes on a serious note uh, michelle uh some some really good points there and i, I think some, the point you made there that it, that it is a journey and for you guys that are saying right i want to double my income oh sorry i want to double my sales over the next 12 months you'll get there but that isn't the end of the journey you, you, and if you think that your problems become smaller, uh, the more that you generate, I've got some bad news for you. Your problems just become bigger. And that's a fact. 
all you guys, most of you on this call, you want to increase your sales. You will have more problems. I promise you that. And we've never sat here and said, yeah, increase your sales and there's no more problems because you just have different sort of problems. That, that, that's all it is. Yeah, but they're better quality problems, though, Terry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah, let, just very quickly, I just want to come to you, Mike. With that, you've won 50,000. I'll come back to you in a second, Don. What are the problems is that 50,000 retained, that 50,000 given you over the last week or so? Just give us an example. I think, right, I've had to find researchers to do all the research. I've had to find copywriters to put all the uh, candidate prospectuses together. Um, I've had to jump through hoops with, uh, what, once the roles have been approved, I've then had to jump through hoops with their registration on their supplier departments. Um, I've then had to physically block out because even though the research is being done and they'll do almost screening calls with them, I, I'm then going to have to do full interviews with them. We've had to prepare candidate presentation documents and interview schedules. Um, so that's, you know, there's a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I always take a view, you know, people say, uh, you know, under promise, no, we deliver. You know, I take a view of I'm going to over promise and I'm going to deliver to what I promised to. So I'm setting my standards in terms of what I deliver to my clients incredibly high. And so I've got a lot to live up to. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Yeah. Th thanks for that, Mike. So yeah, your problems are just, you just get different sort of problems as, as you go along. So back to you, Don, uh, you joined us in, you joined in, in, in this, in December, um, we share stuff with you. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> What's going on here? What was it that we shared with you where you were just like, I don't get it. Or where, where was your biggest reservations other than the emails that we touched on? Where, where else did you have reservations? And then I'll ask you about some of the successes you had. Because this is really great for, for other people. Because everybody here has got reservations about something, by the way. Yeah, I mean, um, I think uh, by and large, my, my situation uh, was probably less about the reservations. I mean, there was all, there's always reservations whenever you're trying anything new, right? So, you know, there's always some apprehension. You're stepping out of your comfort zone. Um, but I don't know if there were, I mean, I think Drew probably touched on it. Maybe the, uh, uh, the email might, might have been a reservation. Um, uh, Facebook is another, <laughs> maybe another <laughs> reservation. Um, yeah, and I'm going to tell you a funny story. Uh, my wife told me because of all the uh, political stuff on P Facebook, she, she told me I was never allowed to actually get on Facebook. <laughs> so I, so I, I, broke, uh, I broke out of my, she, she said I would go crazy. She did. She did. She said, you would absolutely, she said, you need to stick, stick with LinkedIn because if you get on Facebook, you're going to hate what, what you see and, and read. And I said, well, I just, I, you know, in Twitter is not something I ever even look at. We post to Twitter just to put it out there in cyberspace, but I don't ever even look at Twitter. So I, you know, again, there's only so many hours in the day, but, um, but anyway, I'll, I'll leave that at that. Those may, maybe those are some examples. Yeah. And it's interesting. Um, of a certain generation that um, I put myself in this generation, there is this reservation about Facebook that it's for kids. And I was talking to, sorry, I was talking to Nick. I don't think he's in on the call. And he was, he's got, he's got younger kids. And he's saying the kid, not even the kids use Facebook now. That's so, so yesterday. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we, we have, we have no idea. So you, you embarked on the journey. Just talk us through some of the marketing strategies that you use that, that worked well for you and some of the outcomes, uh, please, Don. Yeah, that's that's a great question, Terry. Um, so we, you know, the, I, I would say that the most important one uh, that I found as I got started was the LinkedIn three-step process, culminating in the ten before ten calls, and that should come as uh, hopefully no surprise to anyone who's, you know, up to that point. There may be some people on the call on the call that haven't uh, gone through that cycle yet, but get to that first would be my. Mm -hmm would be my principal advice. Mm. Now we've done, we've done a lot of different things uh, this year, things that um, you know I never thought we'd do. I was presented as you both know the, uh, this past week and I, I posted this on Facebook that we were presented a different uh, domain name uh, for a reasonably inexpensive price. And I was like, you know, what the hell am I gonna do with this at first? But I was like, no, it's a pretty cool name. I wonder if we can point that to our website or somehow do, uh, do something else with that. And, and so that's still, you know, that's going to be another work in, uh, work in progress, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but we've done a, a, a variety of different things this year. Um, you know, principally, uh, I mean, we've got, 
Now, three lead magnets versus one. Okay. Could, could you just yeah. give us an overview of what your lead magnets are, just just for the? Yeah, I'm I'm happy, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Um, uh, one of them is is fairly expensive for us to produce, but um, I think the results to it are, are are going to be very good. They've been fairly good so far this year. Um, one is uh, the first one was the original ebook, the Twelve Steps, we call it. Um, so, what was the exact uh, title, Don? Uh, it's why you're losing the the war for life sciences talent borrowed straight right. off the Mike Meyer America <laughs> uh, bandwagon there just superimposing one a couple of words maybe. Um, yes, yeah, so just sorry, John. Just just for those that listen, I think Cody asked about this. Um, Mike or, or or Don, and for you new guys, just just get your head around this. We share everything. So Mike or Don are happily share their ebook. Uh, that they use for there. We'll, we'll post it on the Facebook group. You can take it, copy and tweak, tweak it, and and call it yours. It's it's that easy to do. So we'll, we'll post that for you for you guys that want that. We'll post that on the Facebook group. Absolutely. Thanks, yeah. yeah, and you know that that first ebook was basically all I did was take a template, I guess, of Mike's or maybe another one I had gotten, uh, wrote it out. You know, I. I put in a little bit of my knowledge about the life sciences industry and how I thought so, that might be different for some of those sections. I put a few graphics on it. I sent it to my advisory board and said, hey, what do you guys think of this? <laughs> they were like, it looks good to me. I was like, great, zap, you know, start, you know, start getting it out. And then about two months ago, uh, we, uh, we paid uh, uh, Vivian, one of uh, somebody Mike has been using a while, to redo it in a more modern and, and a much better looking feel. Because uh, I'm not a graphic designer. I don't really want to become one. So we sw flipped that over to her and said, could you do kind of do a remake on this? And she did. And she did a very good job. The other two pieces we have are, are another piece that she did uh, here recently on. It was specifically on COVID and how COVID is uh, impacting um, uh, you know, the market and the hiring and the, and the onboarding and all of that. And we actually used uh, some of that information as the basis for a webinar. You, you know, we talk a lot about, I think, in this group, content reuse and how you can reuse video to, uh, you know, to podcast, to blog post. And we've, I've been weak on the blog post side, to be honest. The podcast is up and operational. We've got several of them out there now, maybe 45 videos done to date. But, you know, we're getting there that, you know, reuse that content. And then the third one is a, is a, is a labor market uh, report, which is there's some expense involved in that on our side, but we measure all of the uh, ads posted in the life sciences sector in the United States and really slice that and dice that. Um, it looks more like uh, what I would call a wall street report than it does a, uh, an ebook. And our hope with that is that the, C-level decision makers in the industry will have something that's extraordinarily unique that they've never seen before because they haven't. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Thanks, for that, Donna. I want, to go, I want to go to Drew next. Drew, any any questions, buddy? Um, yeah, I guess you know, this really for us, for everyone else listening. Everyone that we um, do these interviews with or, or speak with about you know what's worked for them, what, what hasn't. There's always you know one or two things that they say. Oh, I wish I'd done that sooner wish them that 10 weeks ago whatever what what's been the sort of you know one two i don't know how many things it is but the, the things for you where you did it it sort of surprised you how well it worked or how easy it was and you sort of think oh, i wish i'd done that sooner what's what, what would that be for you two things uh one outsource uh, parts of the business sooner that uh that were uh, conceivable and feasible at that time do that as fast as you can as, as soon as your business allows um I would say the se second thing is is uh, bump up the number of uh, ten before ten calls, so uh, get it get it up above uh, above ten. Uh, I'm I'm fetching about eighteen to twenty a day, and and part and I had no more time to do any more planning, but we we outsourced more of that so that I could bump those numbers up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't I don't have the time to look up phone numbers and email. I did, there's just no not enough hours in the day. That's what I was doing at the beginning. But I don't do that anymore. So just just on the outsourcing, you know, you say we should have done it sooner. Um, and I know, again, that's quite a common one, really. People do it and they thought we should have done it sooner. What was the, I guess, the delay for you? What was holding you back doing it? What was your sort of thoughts around it? 
Well, and I think part of the delay is, 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 is a good reason to delay. And this is the only reason that I can come up with to delay off the top of my head. And that is to do the process yourself first. I mean, literally do it soup to nuts. It's painful as hell. I mean, I don't, again, why do I want to look up people's mobile phone numbers on true people search? I, do, I don't, or comp, corporate phone numbers. That's not a good use of anyone on this call's time. But, you know, in order to be able to explain it to someone else, how you do it, and I, and I did videos of this as well. I did, I've got 25, I think, videos that I've cut for our virtual assistant teams and our outsourcing teams. This is how you do this. This is how I want it done. And so, um, so that, yeah, that was a bit of a delay in and of, its, in and of itself. But um, beyond that, it's, it's, for me, it was my own maybe reluctance in some way to turn over the, uh, the reins because the work quality wouldn't be as good or whatever. And I found that to be completely false. In fact, did you find, Don, that some people could do the work better than you, those, those things that you were outsourcing? <laughs> yeah, I think I've heard that from, uh, from Darren and Mike a few times on these calls that I, I can echo that, uh, that, that this, these groups do, uh, do far better work than, uh, than I do. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's, 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 that's, that's always the case. So you, 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 I know that you did um, uh, something that we advocate, which is the, the nine word email, which... Um, which always works well. Tell us about your your activity there and the, and the results you got from the nine word email campaign, please, Don. Yeah, I mean, the, um, so we're doing right now. I think we're on our third go round on a massive list on uh, Get Prospect and trying to um, or cut that came from Get Prospect, I should say, through Webpacker. That's the technology, and uh, this one is actually um, the COVID book uh, offering that uh, Vivian. Uh, helped write or actually wrote most of uh, about a month or so ago. Uh, you know, we had to cut back a little bit on the number of emails. They're down to about 250 outbound per day in that particular campaign. Um, we were, uh, I got shut down by Microsoft for too many emails in a day and I was only throwing out about 350 or whatever. But anyway, um, you know, test the limits of your campaign and adjust accordingly, I guess, is the lesson there. But uh, the, the actual, um, we've had some good, what I would call initial discussions. And we did pick up one client um, out of the uh, nine word email alone that could be directly traceable um, to that action. But I think the, the important part is, is that, you know, we're getting out there and, and getting in front of people that we've never been in front of um, before. Yeah. And the one, the one client that you did pick up, what, what was that client worth? Uh, it's, it's worth, and it, it did, unfortunately, with COVID get uh, delayed, but the search is worth about 40000 when we can pull it back together. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Excellent. I want to come to, to Mike, next, Mike, Mike Merrick. What questions do you have, uh, Mike? I, I think I'd just be interested in, in hearing from Don. You know, there's, I, there's just some people who are quite new to the group here. Um, is anybody new coming into this? If there was one piece of advice you could give them, what would that what, what would that be? <sighs> People are built differently, and what you need to take on as much as you can at any one point in time. But cut yourself a little bit of slack, okay? It's important to get incrementally better over time. Rome was not built in a day. This program has got many, many aspects to it and many aspects, quite frankly, that I haven't quite touched yet. I've gotten many of them implemented, but not all of them. I'm still learning. Uh, approach that my biggest advice is approach this as a constant learning environment. Um, you have to be naturally curious you have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone, to be coachable, to listen, to experience what's working for other people. And not only willing to do that, you have to be motivated to do that. Um, you have to, I think it should be naturally within you um, to want to learn from other people uh, ways to grow your business and to help your business succeed. And I see this very much, um, and this is kind of going to Michelle's point earlier, Mike, about constant learning. I mean, in the, in the classic gym example, you know, you don't go to the gym one time and expect much of an outcome. 
You go to the gym many times a week. The other side to that is if you want to bench press 300 pounds, you've got to start to incrementally add weight to that over, over time. You don't walk in day one if you're bench pressing 150 pounds and, and try to throw up 300, your arms will break off, okay? So, uh, you know, you, you've got to, to build on that. You add five pounds a couple of weeks later, you know, but you go to the gym every day and you add five pounds and then maybe you add 10 pounds a month later, whatever that looks like. Do the most important things first, which is 10 before 10 or getting to that 10 before 10 call plan, do that. And, and, and incrementally add these other aspects to your business. That is the m most direct advice I can give anyone that's starting this program. That's great. Thanks, Don. Are you muted? Sorry, sorry, my mic wasn't. Apologies for that. Don, thanks for that. Um, so you said that, uh, let's check in with you first of all, Don. How many years have you been in, in the industry? Uh, would be, gosh, I have to think about it. I had to stop and think about that for a second. It's going on 20. It's around 20. So 20 years, and so the Don said there, I'm still learning. 20 years, and I'm still learning. And that's the attitude that he's got. It's a really good point there. Thanks, Doc. I want to come to Darren next, and I'm, I'm going to come around the room uh, randomly and, and ask you a question. So I have a question ready for Don, but I'm going to come to Darren next, and it could be anybody else that's... Uh, that's uh, I'm going to come to Darren, then Drew, then I'm going to come around the room. So have your, have your question ready. Darren. Ed, um, Don, I, I'm, I'm really interested to see what your plans are for the new year and how you're looking to evolve things now in the business. That's a great question, Darren. And uh, I've got uh, some different ideas. Uh, some of them are down on paper. Uh, some of them aren't yet. That'll be definitely a... a, a more solidified post US Thanksgiving, which is at the end of November. But some of the things um, I can tell you that I'm gonna be entering the new year with is a, is a slightly redesigned spreadsheet uh, from Mike, um, but that's gonna be reflective of actual, a little more actual experience and results. And then the other thing is um, a system that really can help me uh, track, given, given the limitations that we have with the technology that we're using, uh, I want to be able to make it as easy as possible on myself to just simply execute, but to change course by knowing the numbers in a far better way um, than I do right now. Uh, and I'll get there um, and I'll get there before the end of the year. Thanks, mate. Thanks for that, Don. Great. Drew. Um, yeah, just before I sort of ask my question, there's a, there's a question here from John Riley who says, Don, where do you get your data from for your 10 before 10? From the uh, LinkedIn Connect, principally from the LinkedIn connections that I send out uh, 50, uh, roughly 50 every day using the three-step process. Okay, just want to sort of check in with, with the group. Um, have you found sort of this interview today useful? Give me a yes or no in the chat box. And if you've got any questions, um, post them in there now. So Donna, I've just got one, I guess, final question for you. And it, you know, it might be a sort of a, a long, a long, might require a long answer, but, um, you know, you, you, you've grown your business over the last few months, um, you know, even during COVID, as you said, a few months ago, but what, you know, if you could sort of pinpoint a handful of things that for you have made the, the biggest shift, you know, move the needle the most, um, what would they, what would they be? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, again, the biggest shift is number one in mindset, uh, number two is in organization and planning. Number three is uh, executing against um, the strategies that are that are outlined by and large. Again, I haven't I haven't done all of the strategies. Uh, email is a weakness, as mentioned uh, earlier, and that's something that in 2021, to Darren's question, yeah. I'll be needing to, you know, and even to the end of this year, be needing to work on that. But uh, so I've, I'm still on a journey and uh, those are, but those are the, you know, figure out what's important. Um, Terry said to me early on uh, so, uh, something to the effect of, uh, you know, people um, won't buy from you unless, unless they know you and trust you. And, you know, we talked about this year, a lot of this year is about been getting a much larger audience to actually know me. So 
what I've got to start to make a little bit of the shift to in 2021 is a little bit more of what I'm going to call the nurture phase, because we've been going hard <clears throat> this year. I've been going hard at building up um, the sales list. When I started, I want to give you some numbers. When I started the uh, sales list, and this is a constantly evolving list because I'm pulling people off of it that I don't want to call because I'm like, this guy's a one man or two man shop. He slipped through the clacks. Uh, or the cracks, he's off the list. So I pulled five people off the sales list today that I won't be following up with again. But the point being that that list has grown from, I don't know, 250 names when we started last December. It's at about two, it's just under 2,000 right now. Okay. So that's 10 months later. Um, and again, some of those names will come off, but more yeah. will be added. And that ask me what that, what that list size looks like six months from now, it'll be well in excess of 2000. Okay. And so that's the point. That's, you know, a lot of those people had, most of them had never heard of us before. Um, and now 1750 of them roughly have. Hmm. Excellent. Awesome. Um, question here from Cody. Uh, what, yeah, what keeps you motivated? Why do you stay in business? <laughs> well, for me in our industry, that's a, honestly, um, that's a bit of an, uh, an, an easy one. Uh, the reason that uh, I love our business is, uh, first of all, it's complex. Uh, it's one of the most complex sales there is. It's not like selling a car, you know, where there's a specific price or uh, at least a range within prices and a specific product that might have a few options. Um, this is working with human beings, either one of which on the side, either side of the deal can pull out at any uh, particular point in time. And I think we've all had that and been there. In fact, unfortunately, we had that this week. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's working with human beings. And uh, I, think, yeah, I think the other side of that is specifically the industry that we recruit in the life sciences is, is, uh, is very rewarding because every day I'm at least as motivated by the idea that I might actually place somebody, uh, you know, in a company that makes a significant contribution to human health. Uh, they maybe uh, one of my contacts right now, um, we haven't done work with them yet, but we're hoping to, uh, is actually the CEO of a company. Uh, it's one of the four companies that has a, um, a vaccine uh, that's being guided actually by AstraZeneca for the COVID virus. You know, my idea of that is like, look, wow, if I could place somebody that develops a drug that cures some form of cancer or, or, or whatever the, the disease state is, brilliant. That helps thousands and thousands of people. And I get to earn a living off of that? Brilliant. That's my answer. Awesome. It's about making a contribution. Yeah. I was talking to Luke earlier about this and about, you know, your real why, because that's what will drive you. That's making the contribution. Talking of Luke, I'm going to come to you next, Luke. Luke. Yes. Hello. Hello, buddy. You all right? What's the, what's the, yeah, great. What's the question that you have for Don? So um, you mentioned about one of your biggest concerns being around email marketing. What sort of content are you going out with now to attract new business? So the only, uh, the only, what I would call, I've got two separate lists, Luke. One of those is the cold list. That's okay. the get prospects per email Here's, here's the ebook offering type list. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've got a group of about 3,000 people or so in uh, a, list, a list that's been cold, I suppose, over the years that I had before I started this program. And that email list has been far more sporadic. Uh, they, admit, at a minimum, get a quarterly contact from me. But that's the list that, that I want to work on, that I'm referring to that I, where I need to kind of break out of my own mindset, get out of my way and do more with that list. Cause those people do not hear, if I'm only sending them an email once a quarter, it, it might be a good one because it's the, quite frankly, it's the content that I referenced earlier. That's a quarterly uh, report on how the life sciences labor market's actually doing. But if they're only hearing from me once a quarter, that's not uh, good enough, is it? Mm, that's right absolutely right and when you think most of your emails don't get opened really good point yeah thanks luke thanks don mickey mickey trent in dallas actually i'm in tennessee 
Tennessee. Okay. <laughs> Same accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I had already uh, I actually actually put it on there. I had asked uh, Don if his email list, if he's already connected to them on LinkedIn, because trying to keep up with that, like I'll invite them, then I'll email them. And some I'm already connected to, have been connected to. So just keeping that, it's a little stronger if you're connected already. So how, how do you um, go about keeping up with that and, and communicate differently with those you're already connected with and that kind of thing. That's a great question, Mickey. And, and, and the way we do it, it I, I would say 99% of the people that are on that email distribution list are in fact uh, LinkedIn connections. Um, I had to figure out a tracking process for the, tens, uh, for the um, LinkedIn three-step process uh, early on because, because I'm, I'm a data guy, I want to see how many people, you'd be able to at least pull the information on how many people I've sent the ebook to, or what, you know, whatever the case may be, and what those results are. Um, so in our database, we've codified the different steps. You know, you get, step one, you get an invitation from me. Step two, you've accepted it. Now you get the, you know, uh, would you like the ebook offering? Uh, step three, so on and so forth. And so um, I, the, the difference is now I'm not doing that anymore. The outsourcing company's doing uh, all of that. So when I, when I started it, I, I had to invent a system that would basically be within our system that would track to what you know, the, these programs are. And I did that. And then, uh, but then I had to fit, you know, I had to go about figuring out, like, I can't do all this stuff. And then that's when I was like, okay, I got to get this, this outsourcing, uh, the wheels in motion here. That was probably around the March or April timeframe. So, uh, um, so I, I would just, whatever system you're using, um, I'm a big fan of centralized databases and repositories because stuff can fall through the cracks and get lost and whatever it is, the system that you're using, we're going back right now and figuring out stuff that, has fallen through the cracks. Um, but hopefully with the new systems, the, it won't fall through the cracks again. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Thanks, Mickey. Thanks, Don. Helen. Yes. Hi, Helen. Hi, Helen. Sorry, I couldn't work out, work out how to come off mute. Yeah, um, we've all did it. <laughs> Thanks, Don. It's been really, really helpful. Um, I, I missed a little chunk because I had to drop out to set up a call for a client. Um, and so I want to kind of go back, if that's okay, and just ask you about the, the books um, and the items that you've made. Um, I can't remember what you called them. You called them something specific. Client magnets. Client magnets, that's it. Um, what were the other client magnets that you used? And and what did you, um, what did you get the most... Um, downloads to actual downloads um actual downloads i believe has still been the ebook that's been in operation longer helen than anything else okay. um so it was the 12 steps ebook um it was we have a, a a labor market analysis and report is okay. is the second one and the third one uh which was just recent is uh in essence discussing covid and specific differences in recruiting and onboarding Okay. within that construct so it's an it's call it a new ebook it's just a really a supplement and how people are doing things differently okay i do have a second question if that's okay if that's yeah allowed. sure yeah um so so when you're going down the three-step process um and and some of those people are are perhaps people that you know they may not have been clients but they may have been candidates for example so the people that you have had conversations with before how how do they feel when they are presented with the 15 minute 10 before 10 kind of strategy call, whatever, whatever you have chosen to call it? How do they respond to that if there's somebody that you already know and have already had conversations with before? I mean, I think that's a great question. I, 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 I don't know that they necessarily respond any uh, any differently based on my experience. I had two people book into my calendar today. Uh, or not well they booked today for future calls but um yeah i don't i don't know that they've responded really any uh any differently than um than anyone else would have was are you experiencing that no i i'm still not there with my 10 before 10 calls yet um but i'm just nervous about 
the, the first conversation I have with somebody that I know, um, kind of launching into um, the, the script without any preamble um, feels, feels a bit alien to me with somebody that I actually know. Somebody that I would naturally say, you know, how are you? How's everything? I work with the States. So obviously, you know, there's differences in what's going on with, with COVID. You know, how, how are you? How's everything in your part of the world is, is the way I would normally start a conversation. Um, and I just wondered if anybody else has experiences of, of that with people that they know. I think Hello. Can, I, can I go to Michelle? Michelle just made a good point. Michelle, OK to come to you? Just answer that question. Yeah, Helen, I mean, we, we just soften it. We just do exactly what you're doing. And then as soon as they've said the pleasantries, we just go, oh, my reason for my call today is, do you mind if I take whatever? And then you just go into mm -hmm. it. So, and, and, and there you're like, yeah, yeah, fine, whatever. They, they, don't, they don't care. At least you've got, as long as you've got a reason to call. Okay. No oh, brilliant, thank you. Yeah, and I would also try to Helen, um, I think I really appreciate you saying you said what a lot of people are thinking. Um, um, I was a little bit nervous. Um, you're a little bit nervous about making those calls. That, that's quite understandable. Um, everybody here has been nervous about making the first 10 before 10. Everybody here is delayed doing that. Um, but that's quite understandable. The only way to overcome it, Helen, is to actually do it. Mm. There's, there is no, there's no easy way. Um, uh, Vicky's just saying she had this, exactly the same thing. Um, yeah. Helen, I would really encourage you to, to just do it. Okay. ASAP. You. Yeah. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Thank Don. You. I'm going to come to Leo. Don, I know you've got a, you've got a meeting to go to shortly, so we're going to wrap up shortly. But I just want to come to Leo first of all, then then we'll start to wrap things up. Hi, Leo. Hello, Terry. Hi, everyone. Hello, Don. Hi. Nice to hear the story of Don. Um, no, I mean, I don't have much question. Maybe one um, that we for Don that is... If there's one thing, I mean, the, what would be the one thing that you wish you knew um, that maybe you would have started earlier? Um, we've got to do the whole process. We've got to marketing, we've got to email, we've got to, I don't know, uh, maybe um, what do you call that, uh, paid marketing. The one thing that you wish you knew before um, that actually bring you the, to the, the, the most results. I mean, the, the overarching, I think it's a great question. I mean, the overarching piece is, is how to structure <laughs> early, early on. Um, I think, I think beyond that um, is, is, uh, you know, really just wrapping my arms around and systematizing these, uh, these processes and, and, and getting on with it. I mean, um, that's, it's a short answer, but that's, uh, that's what I, I wished I had done more of that um, earlier and may, maybe structured, uh, which is why I'm telling everyone the 10 before 10 is critical. It, it, it works better than any of the other. I can make 47 videos and get 87 views and, you know, or whatever. And so what? I, I'm going to talk with a hiring manager today. I talked with two of them this morning. Um, you know, I talked with the CFO late yesterday afternoon of a biotech company. So, you know, you're, you're out there, you're talking to people, you're getting, um, even if you're not getting a, a, a job order today, a search assignment, whatever, you're, you're getting information, you're getting informational assets, you're starting to build a bit of a relationship. And um, I think the important thing with the 10, 10 before 10s, I, th I think it's great if people, uh, uh, you know, get business right, uh, right at the onset, but I, I think going into it with the mindset that it's really an exploration type, type call. You know, maybe Helen, this touches on on your question also, and, and Michelle's. I, I just think that idea of uh, uh, let's explore this and see if there might be some synergies there, and if there's not, get on with it. And so what? Mm -hmm. um, and, and and if there is, you bookmark a call for you know for later on, uh, put it in your diary, what or whatever. Or hey, uh, if we don't if we get funding, you know, we'd let, we we're going to need these positions. That's great. He doesn't have funding yet. Super. I, I wish you well. If there's anything I can do to help that along, I'm happy to try. And um, you know, call them back in six months and see how they're doing with their funding. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Don, thank you so much uh, for sharing and sharing sharing your journeys as we come to an end, end there. I, th I think um, for me on a personal level, I think that you've, you've said there, two, I think there's three things, open-minded, so you're open to learning, you have a wealth of experience, but you haven't got the attitude is, what can you teach me? I, I've got the wealth of experience, what else can I learn? You know, I think you used the term, um, I'm open to learning, naturally, naturally curious. That can only serve you well. 
I think the big thing is for everybody is that implementation plus, uh, sorry, um, my apologies, engagement plus action equals results. You've probably got, got this from Don. Don is engaged. Don's in, Don, you're on, I'm going to say, 90% of these calls on, the, on, a, on a Thursday and Friday. I'm disappointed that you don't get up at three o'clock in the morning on the Monday to join us, Don, but I'm not going to hold you up. But seriously, <laughs> you, you're on these group calls every week. There's no uh, maybes or whatever sometimes. You're on them all the time. You book weekly uh, coaching calls and you implement what we share with you. That to me is, is the, the real massive takeaway here. Um, Don, thank you so much indeed. Uh, really appreciate you giving your time and sharing this with us uh, today. So big thank you, Don. Um, I owe you a pint of beer for that or a cross on the weather, whatever is your thing. Um, just to remind everybody, yeah, we've got the triage feeder tomorrow, three o'clock um, for the new guys. If you go into the Facebook, into the events tab, uh, all the details are there. Until next time, folks, take care, take action, and be relentless. Cheers, everyone. Once again, Don, thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks, Don. Thanks. Yeah.